$3,500 for this MacBook Pro. And we're back. And this is the unboxing video of the 2017 MacBook Pro 15 inch. I've gone to the other side. MacBook Pro logo, Apple logo, MacBook Pro logo on the other side, and on the back you can see very clean box we have here. Let's slice right into this. Nice. This, you guys know, this is a very pricey computer that we need on this channel. So let's take this channel to the next level. We join the other side with this MacBook Pro. You guys know all the videos on this channel has been edited, produced, everything you want to call it with Chrome OS. But to take it to the next level, we've gone to the other side for editing purposes. We've gone to Apple. And I absolutely had no plans to go to Windows. Type-C to Type-C cable. You got your Apple booklets right here. Apple stickers, and it's not gonna match. They're in white. You have your charging brick. Really heavy brick, really big. Now this don't have your Mac safe. This is Type-C. Type-C all around, everything on this. Laptop is type C. MacBook Pro 15. It does feel pretty heavy. It does look good. But you know, this is a big laptop for the people who don't want a desktop, who don't want an iMac. You want to keep things on the go, which I plan on keeping things on the go. So I had to get this. I couldn't get the 13 inch because getting a dual core processor. You know what? This channel is looking to go far places and we need the maximum power. And that's why I got the specifications that we got. This MacBook Pro 15 is coming with the highest processor. This is the 3.1 quad core processor with the seventh generation Intel Core i7. Turbo boost up to 4.1 gigs. It's, uh, of course, it's updated with the Radeon Pro 560 with 4 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 SSD. Now, the reason why I decided to go with 512 is because I'm looking to pull my videos from Google, from the Google Photos app. I got to and, and the whole thing is I'm not keeping my footage. I'm gonna erase it on the go. Comes with a force touch trackpad, four Thunderbolt three ports, type C ports, the headphone jack, type C ports, and all of these ports come with the fast charging, comes with the charging, so you can charge on any port. Really clean looking device. Final Cut Pro is already installed. Comes with that backlit keyboard and the touch bar with Touch ID. We gotta look into that. Feel this space gray aluminum. It just looks awesome. I, and this is a beast. This looks awesome. Look at the build on this. You got the feet at the bottom and you got your vents back here, which you can't tell. You would think this is a ventless device, but it's not. Let's see if we could do the one touch. Yep. One hand to open up and it's automatically going to boot. All right, guys. So I put everything in. I got in Chrome. I got in the Photos app. I'm pretty much checking out everything. You guys can see right here, um, I got Safari and Chrome. I rather have Chrome, I have the Photos app. 
And if you go into Launchpad, Launchpad is where you get all your apps to show up. You guys can take a quick look what I got here. But what I have that I really gonna need is Final Cut Pro. And Final Cut X, I'm just trying to figure out how do you get the videos from Google Photos right here. So there's things I have to go figure out. But I can tell you this right now. You can see on the touch bar, it says new event, new project. Based on what app you open up, you're going to get different stuff on that touch bar. So, the screen resolution, 15.4 inch, 2880 by 1800. This is the native resolution. It's giving you a pixel density of 220. Now, you can lower the scale in. Uh, 1920 by 1200 1680 by 1050 you can lower it if you don't want it as punchy but I'm gonna keep it just like this because I'm really impressed with the MacBook the touchpad what I'm feeling with the touchpad is that it's a little bit smooth but it's a little bit more rough than the Chromebook pixel if you're used to Chrome OS you know you could just tap and you get a result you gotta actually click it. Now it's not a hard click, it's a really short click, just like the keyboard. But it's something to get used to. Keep that in mind if you're looking at the MacBook. The keyboard, keyboard has that click. Too much click, a little bit too much noise, in my opinion. Very clicky, very clacky. Screen, screen is awesome. But I'm getting used to it. You guys gotta give me time. I gotta check out See, I opened up, every time you open up something, something different comes up on the touch bar, which is really cool. If you open up the app store, you're going to see right here, more stuff comes up on the, on the uh, touch bar for you to uh, click on. If you want to click on categories, you could come up with different categories. Now... Is it a shortcut for the trackpad? Probably so. The trackpad is absolutely huge. Maybe that's why they have the touch bar or they just have the touch bar just to add something more fancy. Now, I um, set up the Touch ID. I did everything I can do to set this up. But I can tell you guys this. You guys got to come back for me to do some follow-up videos. Is it heavy? Yes. Is it a child can use no it's too heavy I would say get the 13 inch if you want it for your kid but if you want it because you're gonna be doing some heavy stuff this is what you want to get but let's talk about the price for a second thirty five hundred dollars let me swallow thirty five hundred dollars for this MacBook Pro it is painful it's hurting me right now I am thinking, should I honestly spend an extra $379? You guys got to tell me in the comments. Is it worth? Does it make sense to add on for $379 Apple Care for an additional two years? Because they, you, get, you do get a warranty for a year. When you get Apple Care, they say it's three years. But in actuality, you added on two years. You're adding on an extra two years plus phone support from the beginning. Because they only give you about 90 days of phone support in the beginning. So, is it worth getting? I'm still thinking about it. I am broke. I am absolutely wiped out from getting this computer. It is going to mess up what kind of products that I get. That's why this took me so long to upgrade to a MacBook Pro. Because it's so expensive. It's going to hurt me making videos and getting new products. So you guys got to help me out, have a little patience with me. Videos are going to come out a little bit slower because I want to edit it on the MacBook Pro. That's the only reason I got a MacBook just for the editing software Final Cut Pro. That's the only reason I got this. So I'm spending an extra $300 for the Final Cut Pro and then I have to buy the computer for $27.99, upgraded the processor for $200. And got Final Cut Pro taxes, gotta pay the government $3,500. Bang. If I add on, 
Apple Care, that's going to bring it just shy of $4,000. Is it really worth it? You guys got to tell me, if you think this is a fantastic device, did I make a good investment into the channel? Did I make a bad investment? You guys let me know in the comment section. Should I completely retire the Chromebook Pixel or should I just use it as a fun device and let this be the workhorse? I think I'll be editing on both for a while, but when I really want a video to look sharp, to look excellent, to be edited perfectly, I'm probably going to use the MacBook Pro. But right now, I have no idea what I'm doing. I got to get with it and learn this thing because I never did any edit with Final Cut Pro before. I'm really excited, but I'm a little bit intimidated by this machine. So, this has been the unboxing of the MacBook Pro 15 with touch bar. This is highly specced out. The only thing I kind of backed up on was the storage. We'll see you in the next one.